Well, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, here it is with Evangelist Tony and Marge Abram uh, with you today and uh, filling in, hosting for our dear brother and sister Walter and Nina Zagrevich, who are the real hosts of this broadcast that's on many platforms that gives it a worldwide reach. Now, we are calling on you while Walter and Nina are in the plane traveling uh, on their way to Europe and where they're going to be ministering the gospel and believe, we're believing they're going to have great ministry, but we're inviting you to do evangelism. You know, we are saved uh, to serve. And how do we serve? But by spreading the good news. And what is the good news? Well, the gospel of Jesus Christ and lifting up Jesus. And that's what we are doing here. Now, here's how you can be a part of it today. You, I know you what you're thinking. Oh, he's going to ask for some money. No. I'm asking you to do some evangelism by taking your phone. Let's get it on there. Uh, get your phone. If you have a smartphone or if you're on your a laptop or a computer and you're watching and take it and, and sign in to a sharing this a message that is coming forward. Just hit your little share button and i see it hasn't come up yet on mine but we're expecting it to come up here in a moment or two and we are wanting you to be a partner in sharing the gospel of jesus christ praise the name of the lord our god is so good mine has just come up now and uh we are now sharing on my phone uh, this wonderful uh, message of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you can comment on it and you can sign in by hitting the share button. Praise the Lord. Sister Marge, how about uh, you giving greetings to uh, some of these people. Now, they may not know that uh, you and I are newlyweds. We've only been married oh, just over 61 years. So uh, we just still love each other. So share something with the folks. Praise the Lord. We are happy to fill in today for Brother Walter and Sister Nina, who are traveling, as Tony said. We are praying for their protection and that they arrive very safely and be blessed in their ministry. Uh, we thank God for Psalm 91, which we always claimed, and we claim that promise for them. And we just bless them and God's richest blessing on them as they arrive safely. And I believe they go to their meeting very shortly when they arrive. And so we need to pray for their strength and their strength anointing the blessing of God upon them. But today we're so happy to be with you, to share with you some of the wonderful precepts of God. Uh, we love the Lord and for all these years, he has been such a blessing to bless us in so many ways that we cannot count them. But we thank God for his faithfulness, Tony. Through the years, he has been faithful to us, yeah, hasn't yes, he? Provided time. our needs right at the last moment sometime, but the needs were met miraculously. We could share so many wonderful uh, provisions of God that he supplied just at the last moment and he met the needs. But I just want to thank God today for his faithfulness to us, for his great plan of salvation. He's given us the very best he had, his only begotten son. And we just love our Lord today and want to obey him and follow him and be in the place where he wants us to be. As the song says, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll be what you want me to be, and I'll do what you want me to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
And, you know, we have been, I, I hear Brother Walter saying that we have uh, been in 125 countries, but it's more like about 140 or something. And I think maybe before, when I get some time, I'm going to get uh, the, the, the globe or the map and or a, a list of every country in the world. I'm going to click it out. I know that uh, Jim Snipe, one time uh, we were driving along and, and uh, he asked me how many countries we've been in. I said, oh, just over over 100 at that time and uh, preaching the gospel. And um, he said, oh, hey, that many. And so we were driving on a long distance. And so um, I start, he was he was writing them down. And when we got over to over 100, he said, hold it now. Uh, we know that uh, <laughs> you, you've been around. Well, Wherever we've gone, we're not tourists. Uh, Marge knows that. I uh, I remember even uh, in Egypt driving by the uh, Sphinx. I, I didn't even care to look at it. I'm, I'm concerned about telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that is what Walter and Nina are doing right now, mm-hmm. or are going to be doing. Uh, as they get to their destination, they are flying on to, uh, I think they land in Barcelona first or or uh, one of the major cities. And, and they're going to be all over the, the, the local. You say, well, that's Europe. Is that a mission? Yes. Europe is probably a bigger mission field than most countries that we think are mission fields uh, because Take, for example, Switzerland and uh, Germany. Less than 1% of the people will attend church on a Sunday. Well, that's an indication that there, there there's not too many people really born again and know Christ. And uh, even England itself, I hear different statistics, 3%, 5%. Uh, but that's not uh, that many. And that, remember... Uh, the, the UK one time was sent missionaries all over the world. And uh, I think that the United States followed uh, uh, their example. And of course, the United States today is one of the, well, is the main uh, sender of, of uh, missionaries uh, throughout the world. And of course, there's Canada, uh, following behind, uh, there is Brazil and a few other countries. But all oh, the need is that everyone would let their light shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not just for the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, the fivefold ministry. No, it is for the whole church. When Jesus spoke to and gave the commission, as we read the scriptures, uh, uh, we find that it is for the whole church. I know that in my uh, my listening and reading of the Bible this morning, I was at the end, end last couple chapters uh, of uh, John's gospel. And then I did, uh, was reading the first three or four, yeah, four chapters of, of the book of Acts. And, but, it, but here you see the commission there in Acts, where Jesus said, uh, you'll receive power for what? To, to share the gospel in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. Yeah. That's what we need to do. Praise the Lord. And that's what Walter and Nina are doing. And, and that's why we have, uh, he has, and his dear wife, they have uh, global vision prayer for America, prayer for the nations. Uh, and that's why you're hearing us. You may be over in Finland or, or Holland or uh, somewhere in Latin America that understand English, although we do have an English broadcast uh, one day a week here. And uh, uh, Spanish. Sp- sp- Spanish. What did I say? English and yes. Spanish. And Spanish, yes. Uh, and... Uh, uh, we're sharing the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'd like us to pray for Walter and Nina right now. 
yes. that God will just give them a great outpouring in every every service that they have, every crusade, and they'll be teaching in a couple Bible schools. So for the next couple of weeks, their ministry is going to sh be in a number, a number of uh, areas and towns. And, and yeah. towns. And Marge, would you pray for them yes, right certainly. now? Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up your name today because you are worthy of all of our praises. And we come with thanksgiving and praise for your blessings, Lord, that you have given us. We thank you. And Lord, as we come to you, we bring our dear brother Walter and sister Nina to yes. you as they are traveling. Oh, Father, Lord. we ask for your divine protection over yes. them. Yes. Lord, we claim Psalm 91. Lord, yes. that no plague shall come near them, Lord, that you shall keep their feet lifted, yes, Lord, Lord, protected as they travel. Lord, we pray for a safe journey, and Lord, we pray for the blessing and of God, the strength of the Lord, and that they will be able to rest even on the plain, Lord, as they travel. And Lord, provide everything they need, Lord, as they travel. Give them the favor of God, Lord, a favor of God with their seating, Lord, and Father, favor in all that they do and all that they you keep them during this time and protect them, Lord. Yes. And Father, as they arrive at their destination, we pray in Jesus' Amen. name in Madrid, Lord, if that's where they're going first, Lord, we just pray for your blessing and Lord, yes. every need and, and those that pick them up and take them to their place they are staying. Lord, in Jesus' name, we ask for your divine protection on those drivers and wherever they're traveling, Lord, and where they are staying. Lord, we thank mm. you and the anointing of God as they minister and as they teach in the Bible school, as they minister and encourage the pastors. Lord, we thank you for the Slavic, Ukrainians, Russians, Lord, and also for those people there in Spain, Lord, the Spanish-speaking people, and Portugal. And, and Portugal also, Lord. Yes, Lord, in Jesus' name, we ask your blessing in Jesus' name upon them, Father, the favor of God, the blessing of God, souls to be coming into the kingdom, yes. give them a harvest of souls too, Lord. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus. And we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I believe Amen. God's going to do some great things. I know some of the uh, areas they're going to be in. Uh, they're going to be in Portugal where they uh, planted a church uh, last year. Uh, and uh, I think they got, well, about 80 people yes, that are yes. regular there. And, but we uh, it's, pray many more will come and yes, attend these meetings yes. and be saved. And, uh, but then they're going to be in uh, uh, north of Madrid uh, teaching in a Bible school. They're going to be over around the Barcelona area. But they are also going to the northern part, right near the French uh, borders. Uh, there's towns up there they're going to be going to. We really need to pray because there is a lot of feeling that's where uh, they're they're fighting um, almost like a civil war. They've had that in the past in in Spain, and uh, I I don't know the other places they're going to be going. They originally were supposed to have been in Israel, and then from Israel to be doing this ministry right now. But for the next couple of weeks, uh, let's really hold them up in prayer, and God richly bless them. We got some sad news too because Brother Walter knows. Larry Craig, as well as I do, a minister, a pastor, uh, back in the 70s. You know, there's been two countries that this is when Brother Walter first started to work with us, because when he was 19 years old, he worked in our ministry the first seven years of it. And I guess we were his mentor back there. And uh, But anyways, one of the two countries that we had a national revival where from the from the president down to the poorest people, they were being reached with the gospel, and it was Bolivia. And uh, Brother Larry came, uh, Larry Craig, Pastor Larry Craig uh, came, 
He was, I don't think he wasn't a pastor right then. No, it, he it, came with Pastor it, Lindsay. He came with Bill Lindsay. Yeah. And we just heard today, we've got a telephone call that Brother Larry Craig, he's 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 not walking on the earth now. He's walking the streets of glory. And uh, I, I can imagine him meeting up there with Bill Lindsay. But I remember uh, them coming and uh, being with us there for about six weeks. Uh, and uh, I remember the one crusade in, oh, I can't remember. Santa the, Cruz. The Santa Cruz. That's yes. right. Thank you, dear. And um, uh, the stadium was so packed. And um, uh, people, the th several thousand people were sleeping on the streets around the stadium all, all night after the crusades. And they wanted to be able to get in. And, and here, Marge and I, we were trying to get in and, and uh, uh, Walter was translating for us at that time. And uh, uh, we couldn't, uh, we, th it was a hard time because the people wouldn't, they were, they were so packed, they couldn't get in. And, and uh, but then we had to explain, uh, Walter was explaining, well, these are, this is Tony and Marge Abram. Uh, they're, they're, they're the uh, preachers. And, and here was Larry <laughs> Craig and, uh, and uh, Bill Lindsay. And uh, they were in a crusade of, oh, God bless. Tony, uh, could I share the one testimony that Brother oh, Larry yes, was so can. moved? Yeah. Um, yes, he shared this through the years. Whenever we come to minister in the, his churches or the Langford's churches there, we would he would share these testimonies. And I remember uh, Brother Larry came to me and he said, uh, would you come and encourage this couple? They have been here every night and of the crusade and their child has a big, hernia on his groin their baby and said they've been looking to the lord for healing they've seen others healed but their baby has not been healed and uh, so i started to go over to to pray and encourage them and as i was going uh all of a sudden <laughs> larry came and he said the lord has already healed i was going to ask brother uh, adam his uh, walter's brother to come and talk to them because his of course, his Spanish was that he spoke Spanish and my Spanish was limited. But anyway, uh, he, the baby, they watched as that hernia was just made smaller, shrunk and disappeared. And he was so I mean, he saw that. And Brother Larry was so thrilled. Well, you know, he knows the fullness of, of heaven now. Yes, he knows yes. what that God can do anything and has done miracles and is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That was one testimony. He saw many that he yeah. gave God uh, the glory for. And uh, over the years, we, we had wonderful fellowship in the several churches he pastored. He pastored yeah. And, and uh, he would always reminisce. And uh, one of the, one of the t testimonies was this woman, this husband and wife, they brought their three daughter uh, three daughters to the uh, crusade. They were deaf and dumb, and uh, uh, I, they had come and they got a hold of uh, Brother Walter. Had they talked to Walter? I, Walter, yeah, with uh, with Larry Craig and gone to. Uh, anyways, and uh, the, they then asked me. I said, "Well, give your life to Jesus," because they weren't born again, and uh, and sure enough, here. Here was the next night. The, they came the next night, and uh, that night they gave their heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then later, when we, when everybody was praying, and many sick people were healed, God opened the ears. I know this might be difficult for some people to believe, but God opened the ears and loosed the tongue of all three daughters, and they yes. brought them on the platform. And the first words they were saying was Jesus Christ, Jesus uh, Christ, and uh, Hallelujah, and, and we and they were speaking, and it just moved, and it, it, the, the crusade was terrific, terrific, and they were with us with six for six weeks. Yes, they were in down Brazil, in all, Argentina, also. no, not Brazil, no. Argentina, Argentina, and yeah. uh, uh, also in Paraguay, and God was blessing in those crusades. They often talked about it, but Larry and and Bill, both in heaven now, they're probably talking and praising the Lord for the times they had pastoring churches. There. And 
and uh, being down in those crusades and probably meeting a lot of people that have gone on to be with the Lord because that happened back in the early 70s. And that's, yeah. that's, that's all 50 years ago. So anyways, God is good. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But we do pray for uh, his uh, sister Craig, uh, Sister Jean, yeah. yes, that uh, and for her the Family, two lovely daughters, daughters. and uh, the Lord to uh, just comfort them. And I know they know uh, that uh, their father and husband is walking the streets of gold with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know that song. I think I mentioned it yesterday on the broadcast. I uh, and he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Well, they, they know now that in reality, walking with Jesus on the streets of gold. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. But we do pray for the family. We pray for the many needs. A lot of requests come in. Uh, that we we want to continue to pray for the uh, Indian folks that are involved in our three-year college in Southern India with, uh, with uh, Brother Thomas. No, well, yes, but uh, with Harley Fiddler, yeah. uh, who has uh, started that school many years ago, and we've been involved for a number number of years, and many good students every every three years are coming out and they're planting churches all over India. And uh, it, it, it's, it's just wonderful what the results have been. But uh, the one that was a little girl, uh, when, when we first met her, she's grown, she's a nurse, but she needs a lung transplant. But Marge and I are praying that God would create a new lungs for yes, her. And she, they, she, they are in, in Ireland at this time. And then there's Brother Thomas, who is one of the heads of the uh, Bible College there in Kerala State in India. And uh, they, uh, he, he's, he's got leukemia. And, uh, but God is, a, God is a miracle worker. By his stripes, we all were healed. It's already paid for. Peter yes. said Amen. that. Uh, Isaiah says in prophecy, when he comes, by his stripes, we are uh, healed. But Peter could look back and see the full price on those stripes that were laid on the back of Jesus. Ye were healed. That's why we can also pray for the sick. Now, uh, that uh, that doesn't mean everybody gets healed. It's a portion of faith. And, and according to the scriptures, what happens. But we pray in faith. And we're praying for you. And the requests are even coming in now while I'm while I'm speaking. And and we pray for the folks on on Facebook and on Twitter and all the other platforms. Yeah. People that are and 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 the and the audience is growing. And it's because of folks like you that are sharing. And that's why the gospel is getting into some of these countries now. Uh, Marge and I uh, at mid mid eighties, uh, we we don't travel quite as much as we used to, uh, and so we're doing a lot of ministry on uh, with my writings and with my uh, ministry here. To, I, I get invitation like uh, Ken Menners would like me to write a chapter on a, some dear minister from the from the sixties. Uh, where she had been a voice of healing, of, of evangelist, evangelist yeah. and that's Sister Louise Copeland. And and uh, I just got to find time to do that. And then also for Marge's brother, uh, I've got to help get, uh, his son, uh, Jeff, uh, to get things together for a book there. And you know, some of these things are little extras, uh, that we do, and then we do things like this, filling in. And but it's a joy to be busy for the Lord. And but uh, but we know that as people pray for us too, 
that uh, God enables us to strengthen us and us. renews our youth. Amen. Amen. And today, I'm going to ask Marge to share something. You know, she she said she was eight years old when she came to the Lord Jesus Christ. Am, am I right in that, Marge? That's right, I was. And yeah. I really knew that Jesus had come into my heart. What was happening around that little town in, um, in Glendon, Alberta, Canada? There was a, re a revival at, in our churches, the Slavic churches there, and all the... And small towns and even the city of Edmonton it affected the revival there the latter it was called the latter rain move because it was such a move of God that people were being saved delivered filled with the spirit being healed miracles dead people even coming to life and fought and the Lord was moving in a wonderful way and that night an evangelist was preaching at our home church I had been in Sunday school, but he was preaching and he invited people to receive Jesus as their savior. And I wondered as a small child, I thought, well, how could Jesus come into my heart? But I raised my hand and kind of shyly raised my hand. And that night, Jesus came into my heart. What a joy there was. The next day I went to school and I shared this testimony of Jesus coming into my life that I knew that I knew that I was saved. I knew I, my sins had been forgiven and I was sharing the gospel already there at that time, the next day at school. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, I, I know that uh, your people came from Ukraine and uh, there was a lot of, uh, lot of pushing that people were wanting a better life and so forth. But th those that had Jewish background, uh, they were being pushed. I know in my own, uh, my father, he was five years old, just a little boy, when he came to the U.S. <clears throat> uh, and, uh, but uh, the family was being pressured. Well, just like the Jewish people are being persecuted around the world today, there's so much uh, hate against the Jews. I mean, other other groups can do all kind of terrible things. And, uh, 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 it's uh, it's not thought as bad, not condemned by the United Nations, but the Jews are condemned more than all the countries in the world put together. And yet, remember, Jesus was Jewish. Yes. Uh, Jesus came first to the Jews, and, and this gospel was uh, it tells us it's to the Jews and to the Gentiles and to everyone who believes. Because in Christ, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither male nor female. There's neither rich or poor. It's whoever's, whosoever may come. Yeah. Well, anyways, I know that my dad came in. And uh, uh, because, uh, I guess, persecution to the family, they, they escaped to the United States. And uh, him with his four brothers and uh, his mom and dad, my grandfather and grandmother. But uh, wasn't that your case too? Uh, they they came as uh, and they, they they had to they came with ten dollars or something like that, didn't they? Yes, they were pioneers, and uh, they had sold their little farm that they had. They were very poor or in Ukraine, but they sold their farm and they paid for their tickets on the boat to come to Canada, and uh, and we we checked up on that and and found out. Uh, the, yes. the the ship they had come and for and so forth and uh, the prices that they paid for their tickets yes. they paid for the tickets that, but they were given was, some land that's how the, the archives in Canada yes they have all that don't they yes they we check those archives and uh, when they came that they were given a piece of land but they had to break the land they had to cut down the trees they had to break the land and prepare it for farming. And there's a, a, a home, a big uh, monument to the Slavic Ukrainians that that were pioneers who broke the land and and uh, planted grain and were great farmers because that was their trade in Ukraine. Uh, and isn't it so that, to you, that your folks, your grandparents, they'd never seen the Bible? And here come a Bible salesman or something, yes. because there, a revival broke out way back there in the twenties, yes, wasn't in it? The early twenties, 
Uh, that's 1920. That's, that's 100 years ago. Yeah. And uh, one day I, on the farm, a, a rider came riding on his horse, and uh, they found out he was a Bible salesman. Can you imagine a Bible salesman way back then riding on a horse to their farm? And so grandma invited them in. They were very poor, and grandma invited him in. And, and so uh, she fed him some food and then she, then they made a before he went to sleep or they all turned in to sleep she uh, had she had made the meal he read the word of god to them they had never seen a bible and he read the word and it sounded so wonderful to grandpa and uh and then she made a place grandma made a place for him to sleep and the next morning he got they got up she made some food and he read the word of God to them again. But he saw that they were too poor to buy a Bible. So he left the Bible with them. And they read that word. And through that, they came to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Of course. And, there, and a revival started to take place. And uh, there was a brother, uh, Brother Hitzayuk, there from, from uh, Ukraine who had been a conscientious objector. And God called him to go to his people in a strange land, which was Canada. And where did he come? But exactly where my grandfather and grandmother and other believers now had come, found Jesus as their savior. And he preached a full gospel message to them and revival began to take place there. And isn't that how the German branch uh, or a group of churches, because there was many German churches sprung up. Yes. And Ukrainian churches or Slavic churches, yes. I should say, because it'd be mixed with Polish and Russian, Russian and yes. so forth, uh, it sprung up all over that uh, north uh, eastern part of Canada, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. And there was great revival there. And Grandpa, he lived for God. He read the word to his family every day. He read the word. And uh, you know, you know, I I would like to read something from the Word if I could right now. Go ahead. And uh, and I just like to read some scripture. And it was Moses called of God, and he was talking to the children of Israel what God had said to them. And this is what Moses wrote in Deuteronomy chapter five, verse one. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. And then down to verse 4. Moses said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates but the verse that I am wanting to emphasize and thou shalt teach them, verse 7, thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. And, you know, I believe that my grandfather did just that. He yes. taught them to his children, yes. to my father and for to the rest of his children, the siblings of my father. And uh, they and talked of them and lived that life all yes. his. Him and grandma were such a testimony. Well, Marcy, you need to tell. Uh, it, it's almost unbelievable. I mean, this is after they all were saved and your grandfather was about our age. 87. He, he was, was a little 87. older than us. And uh, it, uh, and, and what did he hear? And he was deaf, wasn't yes, he? Yes, he was almost deaf. You have to shout for him to hear. But he was uh, talking to someone. And my grandma said, 
are you talking to yourself? He said, no. He said, there's an angel standing in the doorway right beside you. So he could hear the he angel. He could hear the Where heavenly he... choir singing. <laughs> he could hear them singing. And he said, it's the most beautiful singing I've ever heard. <laughs> and he said, the angel is standing right beside you to, to grandma. And did she see him? No, she did not see the angel. Uh, no. no, but he did, saw. He saw the angel. And the angel said, that he was going to go to be with the Lord. He said, and the angel is telling me that I am going to be with Jesus very shortly. And with that, he went to praying. And I don't know how much longer it was, but he he did go on to be with Jesus. And what a testimony yes. that was to the family when yes. they came for the funeral. I, I, I've heard testimony, uh, well, your whole family knows knew it, uh, that not only did he get down on his knees and prayed, the, he prayed in his prayer Spirit. language, yes. and and uh, and then he he went. Yes, he went to be with the Lord just after and, and, that. But, but what about your grandma? Didn't she continue to serve the Lord in yes, her nineties? She shared the gospel. She was ninety-seven when she passed on, and uh, she well, lived she lived a long life. And when well, we asked her, yeah, when I when I first met her, that was many yeah. years ago. We said, Grandma, uh, you're going to live to be 100. She said, no, I don't think so. She said, but you know why I have lived this long? Because I always honored my parents. I obeyed my parents. And whatever they asked me to do, I obeyed. And she said, I believe that's why I've lived this long. Well, the isn't there a scripture that says? If you if first, you honor your parents. It's the first uh, commandment with, with promise. promise. Yes. yes, honor. And you young people. If you haven't honored your mom and mom and dad, you need to start start honoring them. You want to live long. That is the first commandment with promise: honor thy father and thy mother. Yes, and Tony, you know when I've shared this around the world, I've shared this testimony many times because that's my heritage. I am so blessed to have grandparents that loved and served God and. Uh, and grandma said, you know, as I said, she said she lived long because she honored her parents. But as I was uh, in Japan one time, we were ministering there and I was asked to speak to the women there in the in the church, the men and women. It was men and women and uh, in it their was, little church, their it, smaller church. Yeah, it was that chapel they had built for the aged. Aged, people. yes. And so the aged were there, and uh, Martha, yeah, Martha was a young missionary God sent to Japan, oh, and yes. she's now ministering with her husband in Alaska, way up north. The north part. North yeah, part with, of with Alaska, that, that and their little daughter. But Martha was doing my interpreting in Japan, and so I, I the people were seated, seat, seated around a table, and uh, there was men and elderly men and women. And I thought, well, I can't, don't really want to give them a sermon. I want to just share a testimony with them. So I began to share this testimony about my grandpa passing on to be with Jesus, hearing the angels singing, hearing the, the angels saying, you're going to be passing on to be with Jesus. And uh, so I was sharing this and I, I got to the place where, uh, he heard the angels singing, and he, and all of a sudden, this man interrupted. He was on the right side of me, and he interrupted, and he said, what do we have to do? What do I have to do? And that gave me the opportunity to say, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, just like my grandfather lived for the Lord. And beside him, not far from him, was a woman sitting there, but her head was just completely down. She wasn't, she was sleeping or she wasn't taking anything in. So we thought, but anyway, uh, when, when we prayed, I led him and the others to the Lord in the sinner's prayer. And they prayed the prayer. There was such a spirit of, a wonderful spirit of God there working in those elderly hearts. Yeah. And, uh, so we had some coffee or tea with them and some biscuits or cookies, as we call them. And we we uh, 
we were saying goodbye. And as we were, we were getting our shoes on because we had slippers on our feet. You wear slippers in the church there in Japan. We were getting our shoes on to go out. And all of a sudden I felt this embrace, this tight embrace. And I looked and do you know who it was? It was that woman that was asleep or, or not taking anything in. So I thought, she was hugging me. She had received Jesus as her savior too. Yeah, sure. Oh, praise the Lord. What a joy that was to lead those elderly Japanese to the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Amen. What a joy it is to share the testimonies that yes. we have seen God do as Moses commanded us to teach them to our children, children's children, and and let let us be faithful in our testimony. Well, Marge, because of your heritage with your grandparents and your own parents uh uh they were wonderful christians too but uh that had such an influence on your family because you come from a family of eight children yes four four boys four girls right yes that's right and uh every one of them came to know jesus as savior and lord two of them became pastors andrew who has gone on to be with jesus his wife, Karen, is still carrying on uh, what ministry she could still carry on, have a lo lovely voice, and she's a good teacher. They've, they've been over, in, they were over in Europe with us in uh, communist countries years gone yes. by. Yes. And, uh, and then and then brother, your brother, Bill, uh, he's retired now. And, pastored um, for quite a few he years. He pastored quite a few years. Uh, he started off as a... Um, lumber man and yeah. uh, had sawmills and had the second largest sawmill in Yukon at one time. And uh, uh, they were a blessing to our ministry and yeah. still are. They, yeah. I know they pray for us. Well, uh, he and Wanda are, are retired, and, but the uh, two younger brothers have gone to be with Jesus. I remember they were ushers at our wedding. They were teenagers yes. and uh, at our wedding. That's another story. But uh, anyways, you come from that kind of a family, but that shows uh, what God can do. Here, here an immigrant family comes uh, with uh, probably uh, a Jewish background because so many Jewish people came from that part of the world. And, and, and here they, a guy comes with a, on a horse reading, telling them, trying to sell them a Bible, but ends up giving them a Bible because of their kindness. And and salvation comes. Well, some there's some folks today that are watching this, listen to it, or will listen to it on uh, future broadcasts, like on yeah on YouTube, uh, which will be uh, on both uh, Abundant Life Crusade, that's ours, uh, and it will and Brother Tom from uh, Canada. By the way, he's going to be one of our guests next week, I believe, and. Uh, he uh, he he's, he puts that on, and it's it's going to be on there. I don't know for years to come, where and maybe years from now, people still be getting saved because they uh, heard this testimony. Because Jesus wants to come into your life. The Bible says Jesus said it. Him that comes to me, I will not turn away. And what what joy! there is in heaven over just one person who repents and turns from their wicked ways or turns from their sin. You may be a good person or you could be a bad person. The same Jesus will come into your life and save you, write your name in the book of life. Amen. And this can be a beginning of something so wonderful uh, in your life's experience. And would you like to open your heart and life to him? He says in John 1, 12, for whoso, as to as, but as many as received Christ, yes. to them he gave power to become the children of God, even to those that believe on his name. Now you may believe in a God somewhere off in the heavens, but he wants to be a personal savior Involve, involved in your home and in your life and in your family. Are you ready to receive him? Are you ready to open your heart to him? He's ready to come in. Would you, would you pray this prayer? 
And if you sincerely pray it, Christ will come into your life. Lay your hand on your heart if you would. <clears throat> and pray this prayer. Our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. I come to you. I come to you. In the name of Jesus in Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't understand everything. I don't understand everything. But I believe that you died on the cross for me. But I believe that you died on the cross for me. That you died there in my place. That you died there in my place. And Lord, I call on your name. And Lord, I call on your name. Because I believe that you rose from the dead. Because I believe that you rose from the dead. That you sit at the right hand of God. That you sit the at Father. the right hand of God the Father. And I call upon you now, Lord. And I call upon you now, Lord. Save me. Save me. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. Write my name. Write my name. In the book of life. In the book of life. And help me, Lord. And help me, Lord. From this moment. From this moment. To serve you. To serve you. To follow you. To follow you. To live for you. To live for you. Be my personal savior. Be my personal savior. Be involved in my life. Be involved in my, my home, life. My home, my family. My home, my family. I believe, Lord. I believe, Lord. That Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ is Lord. That you forgive me, Lord. That you forgive me, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. With your help. With your help. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow you. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. And help me to live for you. And help me to live and for I you. And I confess Jesus Christ. And I confess Jesus Christ. As my Lord. As my Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And friends, if you meant that prayer, then God has written your name in his book of life. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can have the joy here on earth and it we can grow. And you know what? In heaven, there is great joy right now. If you were the only person that ever called on the name of the Lord, and if you called on him, he, the angels would rejoice. And, and I'm going to ask you to do something, though. Do three things. Talk to God every day. Talk to him like a friend. I, that's what prayer is. Talking to God. Yes, amen. And second, uh, let him talk to you. You would not talk to uh, someone all the time, all the time. They never talk to you. And God wants to talk to you. He, when he does, he talks to your heart. And where do these words come? It comes from the Bible. And let me suggest that you read the New Testament because it is the will of God for you. Hallelujah. Amen. And for your life. And if you will, oh, praise the Lord, live for him, that you'll find joy unspeakable and It'll oh, be full glory. glory. He's your friend, a personal friend. And third, tell somebody else about Jesus. Uh, start by sharing this this broadcast. Yeah. And, and and don't be ashamed of Jesus because he's not ashamed of you. And get involved in a Christian for church that believes the Bible and the gospel, a good evangelical full gospel church in where they preach and believe the word and get involved with Christian fellowships. You won't be sorry. Hallelujah. <coughs> Praise the Lord. And uh, we, we also uh, want to pray for the sick. Now there's so many, I'd like to name each one, but uh, it's not possible. Dry, dry in here, and uh, Marge likes to squeeze the bottle and make it crack. And uh, <laughs> uh, but, anyways, 
uh, we want to say that God is also a healer. Yes. I know are. that our, that was a, a healing that brought our family to Christ. Uh, eventually, the whole yes. family. When my mother was dying, there was no hope back in 1949, 40, 40, 48, 48, I believe it was 48, the same year yes, you know, I was saved. Yeah. And uh, uh, through mom's com conversion and healing and prayers, eventually she prayed the whole family into the kingdom. So uh, when I say kingdom, I mean the kingdom of God, um, where Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Where he is God. Now, if you need healing, the Bible says that by his stripes, ye were healed. First Peter 2.24. Yes. And whosoever comes to the Lord, he doesn't turn away. And I sense in my heart, there are people out there that need a real touch of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, thank and, you. And, I, and my wife, she can pray the prayer of faith too. And she, this, oh, I just sense the presence of the Lord. He's there with you. Uh, just, I'm going to ask because today her testimony has kind of done, was predominant on the, on the broadcast today. And I sense anointing upon my wife to pray. Praise. And uh, she's going to pray uh for all the sick and needy and and you just lay your hand where you suffer you can if you got pain somewhere lay your hand if you can lay it just on your heart yes oh yes yes Marge would you pray the prayer of faith yes amen mm. Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever and he's listening he's hearing our prayers as we pray right mm -hmm. now and agree together yes. you that have are watching this program. Jesus is there with you. He said, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He is with you there. And he wants to touch you right now. So as we pray, just lay your hand, as Tony said, where you suffer or, or where you need God to touch you in Jesus name. Or if you have pain, lay your hand where that pain is in Jesus name. Yes. Father, we thank you that we can come to you yes. in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Thank you for the price that was paid for our sicknesses. Lord, we thank you that you are hearing our prayers today. As we talked of revival and what you did in times past, Lord, you are doing today because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, we pray right now for those that are in pain. We rebuke the pain. We command that pain to go in the name of Jesus. We command it to leave their bodies. Lord, we command in Jesus' name those that have cancers. In yes. Jesus' name, we curse the roots of those <laughs> cancers. We command them to die and leave their bodies in Jesus' name to be healed completely. Those with leukemia, like Brother Thomas, we pray for him right now in Jesus' name. We send the word for that leukemia, that blood plasma to be built up, Lord, that he would have health in his body, in his bones, in his uh, all his being, Lord. In Jesus' name, we send the word to him right now. And that daughter in Ireland, Lord, in Jesus' oh, name, God. that is suffering from uh, her condition, Lord, in Jesus' name, her lung, Lord, in Jesus' name, we ask for healing for her. Lord, you can put a new lung in her body, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, right now. And Father, we pray for all the needs, those that have sent in needs, Lord, their sicknesses, their infirmities, we ask in Jesus' name, we come against all cancers and tumors. And Lord, we hernias, we command them to leave the bodies. We command all pain to go. We command, Lord, all the organs to be working right, Lord. Liver, kidneys, bladder, spleen. 
Lord, in Jesus' name, colon, Lord, in Jesus' name, and Lord, all of the their senses and taste and smell and touch and hearing and sight, we speak healing to them. And Lord, their eyes being healed. Lord, their hearing restored in Jesus' name. And Lord, their mobility, even in old age, they will be able to walk and be strengthened right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray for all parts of the body, Lord, yes. for all parts of the body. And Lord, those that have viruses and, and Lord, allergies, we speak to those allergies. We command them to leave their bodies in Jesus' name. We speak healing from the top of the head to the soles of their feet. Our brother Albert, we speak Speak healing over him, Lord. Respiratory conditions. In Jesus' name, we speak healing over them. We command that those allergies would leave the body and all sicknesses vanish in Jesus' name. Those that have received Jesus, even their sicknesses vanish. In Jesus' name, we pray. And Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, you're healing. You're sending your word. We send your word to them, Lord, in Jesus' name, for you heal and you deliver from destruction. And, Lord, we thank you right now in Jesus' name. We pray and we thank you in Jesus' name for what you are doing right now. We receive, we believe, we receive, yes. and we thank you, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. And now put your faith in action. Believe yes. God. Raise your hand and say, thank, thank you, Lord, Lord for thank your you, healing Lord. power. Thank you. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for deliverance. And give God the honor, the glory, praise and the, the praise thank you, for Lord. what he's done. Thank you, I Lord. sense that pain is leaving bodies yes. Yes, because Lord. we have prayed yes, for you. Yes. And God loves you. God yes. wants to minister to you. And cancers and, are leaving their bodies. Yes, in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. we curse For he the said, I am the them. Lord in that Jesus healeth name. thee. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, yes. we're getting close to the end of our broadcast. Yes. Yes. And we want to say once again that we, we're fill, filling in for Walter and Nina Zagravich uh, the, the, with Global Vision. They're, they have a wonderful vision. Their ministry is is helping in in, in uh, Ukraine. Oh, there's so much in Nepal. Uh, Nepal just went to one village uh, here the other day. You know, had a bad earthquake there. And uh, 50, they, they gave the 50 tents and 50 of these huge, look like quilts, blankets. And they're so thrilled because the people have been freezing there. And so uh, if you can help the Walter and Nina Yes. in their work uh, in Europe, in Africa, yes. uh, in Cuba, and in different parts of the world. Uh, let me say that we know this couple, and they are precious people living by faith, trusting God, and to do the work that they are doing. And go to their website, and you'll see the address Yes. in, in uh, El Yes, uh, they can look on an older, uh, yes. an older uh, in, program. And it's Sacramento on area. Yes. yes, and I think that you'll see it under comments. If you look at the comments later, you'll see the address. But anyways... We pray for America before we go. Yes, that's what I'm going to do yes. right now. Father, in the name, name of, of Jesus, Jesus, we pray yes. for America... America. The nations. Uh, and, and, and the nations. Yes, we pray Lord. for Canada. Jesus, we pray Lord. for Latin America, yes, Central, yes, South Jesus, America, Lord. the islands of the sea. Yes, we Lord. pray for Asia, yes, Lord. Yes, we pray Lord. for Japan. Yes, uh, we Lord. pray for the islands of the Pacific. Yes, uh, we pray Lord. for Africa, yes, Lord. We pray for Ukraine. Europe, for Ukraine. Yes, and, and Russia, name. that this will end. Uh, Lord, Jesus you see the suffering name. there Jesus in uh, in uh, Israel. Yes, we pray Lord. for Israel. In we bind Jesus the name. evil spirits in that uh, want to continue in war in with Jesus Hamas. Uh, let them be. Uh, let them be finished uh, yes, and Lord. let them be saved. Yes, Lord. Uh, but Lord, uh, visit Jesus them with uh, angels. Uh, 
uh, convicting them, scaring them if you have to into the kingdom so that the Palestinian people there uh, do not have to be under that bondage. Yes. We pray Jesus. for uh, all these nations yes. of the world yes. that the leadership Jesus. would be saved yes, in the name of Jesus. Jesus God, name. you are so good. Yes, Who else do we saved. have but the thee? Lord, uh, oh, yes, Lord. <clears throat> and we thank you and yes. praise you in thank Jesus' you, name. Jesus well, name. folks, uh, we come to the end of the broadcast and there's some more things we wanted to share and especially want to share about Walter and Nina and uh, what they what they are doing uh, uh, for the kingdom of God. God is so good and uh, God is using them, but please be in prayer for them as they're ministering, uh, flying in the air right now. Yes, and uh, uh, anyways... We, we we love you. And remember, <clears throat> Walter and Nina say, remember Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is the same, is the yes, same yesterday, yesterday, today, today and, and forever. forever. And Tony and Mart says, remember that we love you, but God, God loves, loves you more. more. God bless you is our prayer. Amen.